we are gonna have a showdown of the two most popular flagship devices on planet Earth. This is the brand new S21 Ultra from Samsung. It has Ultra in the name, so you know it's gotta be good. I have three extra ones. That's because I'm gonna be having a live giveaway very soon. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Also, I should mention, we have later cases for both of these devices. Both flagships fully covered. I sent both Mo and Kirk out with one of these rigs, one of these things right here, and they placed one of each flagship in this unit and went into the wilderness for some reason in order to test each of these two flagship level cameras without me knowing which is which. That's why I have a video right here of an AB of both of these devices and I'm gonna have to try to tell the difference not knowing which is which. I'm going to examine each frame attempting to uh, distinguish the attributes that I like on each of the two cameras. Samsung went for the massive sensor, 108 megapixels. They also have the periscope style zoom. So yes, there's some features on this side that are not exactly here. However, the iPhone approach is to have a lower megapixel count and to do more work, I suppose, after the fact with the neural processing and all the rest of it, we have tons of RAM up to 16 gigabytes inside of the Ultra, uh, the high-end model 512 gigs of storage. So that's comparable across the two. We have a slightly bigger display on the Samsung side, 6.8 inches versus 6.7, and it's a slightly better screen to body ratio as well. IP rating is the same across both, but the Samsung device does have a much larger battery, at least on paper. On the iPhone side, you have arguably the best processor in a smartphone at the moment in Apple's latest A14. And then over on the Samsung side, we have the latest Snapdragon, that's the triple eight. So without further ado, let's get into the video. You're gonna watch it along with me and we're going to discover the differences between the S21 Ultra and the iPhone 12 Pro Max, or we're at least gonna try to see if we can tell the difference. First up, we have the ultra wide shot. And immediately we see a significant difference. We have way more black on the image on the left. Definitely more contrast and a shift uh, towards blue, a cooler tone, definitely warmer on the right. I already have my inclination as to which is which. I think the important thing about this test, since you're playing along, is to know that each phone is going to stay on the same side the whole time. So whichever way your brain is trending, then keep that in mind as you uh, attempt to be a detective here. Exposure, I mean, Th definitely the right hand side is trying to keep the shadows up to maintain some level of detail. Both images are uh, nice. I think either is acceptable. Even in the foreground here on the log on the snow, I feel like I'm getting a little more detail on the image on the left. I'm gonna keep going here, okay. All right, next up we have the wide image here. It's a similar type of frame. Now the right image has added a little bit of blue in the snow. So it has interpreted this frame a little differently. I mean, if you look at the jacket that Kirk is wearing there, it's certainly darker and more black and more contrasty on the left-hand side. Here we go with telephoto. So this photo is a round 3x zoom. It's the first tap on the zoom. This white on the left looks more accurate to me and there's more detail in the jacket. Huh, that's quite interesting. Let's let's proceed. Now we're into the video 4K 30 FPS. Now here we're gonna be looking at a couple things, obviously exposure, <laughs> somebody fell. <laughs> that's the second white belt you took today. But that's kind of a good test, I guess. It looks quite a bit different. The right one remains a little smoother through your fall. The green is more saturated on the image on the left. It's more muted in the image on the right. However, I've seen this jacket in real life and I feel like the right one is probably a little more accurate than the left, but it's subtle. It's a subtle difference. Both are really nice 4K video and even without the extra stabilization turned on. Okay, now the right one is far more stable than the left. And this is with just default settings on the video mode. I see flickering 
in the snow a little bit. There's an exposure thing happening where the exposure is shifting a little bit. It's struggling a little bit. 4K 60 FPS. Ooh. Oh, wow. So what's interesting here is the footprints in the snow. On the left-hand side, it's tremendously more detail where it's a little bit blown out on the right, or at least tougher to pick up all the details in the snow. The left one just looks a lot higher resolution. I mean, I know that they're both 4K, but it just seems, I don't know if there's some sharpening added there or if it's an exposure choice that's happening automatically in the camera, but certainly the left one is resolving a lot more detail. But I'm still getting a little weird flickery thing as the pan takes place. And the right image still has a, a greater smoothness to it. Now this is where I'm starting to figure out which is which because I'm seeing what it's doing with Kirk's complexion. Like these are quite a bit different, these approaches. He has a lot more color in the image on the left and he's uh, a lot more pale in the image on the right. Wow, that's a much different approach here. Now, now I'm now I'm a bit screwed up. Now I am a bit screwed up. I'm the only one in here, by the way, that doesn't know which is which, but interesting. Here we get a sense for the depth of field as the focus shifts to the bark. And this is good for an autofocus test as well. Ooh, close focusing test. Interesting. The camera on the right for sure can focus closer. They both can focus pretty close, but the camera on the right can focus closer. Huh. Wow. Ooh, we're gonna check out some portrait mode now. The skin tone, the skin colors, It's a there's a little more yellow on the left and a little more pink on the right. And the focus fall off around the head. And this is not, not particularly easy because of all the branches and stuff. And I actually noticed a little segment around the, the ear on the photo on the right where maybe it didn't grab it and a little section near the jacket as well where it kind of screwed up the portrait mode ever so slightly. Yeah, I think the left one probably nailed it a little bit better. It's uh, both, both are nice images in different ways. Here we have Mo's version. Whoa, those are, wow. The question is, which is the better image? It depends what you're looking for. If you really like crushed blacks, if you like that really dark black color, the camera on the left almost never gives it to you. The camera on the right brings you there immediately. It's tough. It's a lot of this is is personal taste. The, the left does have more detail. It does have more detail in the skin. Low light. Wow. Um, I mean, the image on the left, for sure. Look at the noise and stuff on the image on the right. I mean, this is so noisy, the image on the right. The image on the left wins. Slow motion. So it's 240 FPS, 1080. There's interesting things that are happening to the exposure here in the indoor environment, especially around color temperature. Oh, this is an interesting clip. The clip on the left is really struggling with exposure. It has blown out his thumb and the wall is nowhere near black. It's very gray. So it's a, there's some guesswork going on there. The right-hand side is a lot more true to life here. Wow, this this is a tough challenge right here. Close focus. Oh, so the one on the right has like basically macro. That's on the main camera. The dollar bill is touching the phone. Wow. Super close focus, tremendous detail. I guess the photo on the left is the same range but it's picking up the grass in the background because it can't focus quite so close. Autofocus. Now this was kind of, the, uh, there was an autofocus issue sort of plaguing the previous generation Ultra. 
Looks like it's not there anymore. I think the autofocus is acceptable on both of these at this point. The Obviously, the left one, the approach is a, a slower transition between focus points, which some may prefer. It's a more action-like type of footage on the, on the right-hand side. It snaps into focus faster. Uh, it's hard. I mean, in certain circumstances, I preferred what was happening on the left. In certain circumstances, I prefer what's happening on the right. Oh, this is harder than I expected it to be, to be honest. I, uh, it went back and forth. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that the left is the Samsung and the right is the iPhone. The left is the iPhone and the, the right is the Samsung. Are you sure? Wait a second. The iPhone is on the left, the Samsung is on the right. Wow, interesting. Wow, this is really interesting. I feel one thing that kind of surprised me is how close these have become and the fact that it wasn't as easy as I thought it would be to tell the difference between the two, at, at least to immediately the portrait mode maybe should have been the giveaway for me that I, I when once i saw the complexions and i saw that sort of yellowish more yellowish hue in the skin tones i probably should have said okay that's got to be the iphone but the thing that threw me off was the struggling the exposure struggling on the snow i was like that's got to be the new phone with the new software and because i had autofocus issues with the last generation of the ultra i was like maybe that Maybe there's some sort of software problem or update necessary because that looked really bad to me. But yeah, it's a little bit of this and a little bit of that. I guess uh, maybe that's to be expected when you're talking about two liters in the segment at this, you know, at this type of price point. But I guess I kind of expected the iPhone to do a little better, maybe. If I had to post this picture immediately, I would pick the one on the left. The wide, here I think I still take the iPhone photo. <laughs> that one is tough. Only reason I'm gonna give it to the iPhone again is because of the snow being what I perceive to be the color of the snow and the Samsung going blue. Our first video, that was weird, man. Cause here he falls and Samsung device is super stable. Now maybe it's just the way you fell. And then you look at this frame here with him uh, laughing and the face is just so much more detailed on the right hand side. I'm gonna take, in this video clip, I'm gonna take the Samsung. <laughs> this one really surprises me. In this case, the iPhone looks a little less natural in the coat color, which I've seen in real life. So I'm gonna take the Samsung one here as well. This is 4K30. Now the running one is really what screwed me up. The iPhone is just going nuts trying to figure out exposure and so much so that it would be distracting to have that in your clip. And also in the default stabilization mode, the, there, there are more stabilization modes on the Samsung. The right is just a more pleasing, smoother movement. 4K 60 FPS. We have blue snow from the Samsung device again, but I can't accept the flickering. I'm taking the Samsung again. Yeah, I'm taking the Samsung again. It feels like photo mode is going to the iPhone and video mode is going to the Samsung. Because now I'm into portrait mode and I remember that the iPhone was the superior one there as well. So I give portrait to the iPhone. Night mode iPhone wins. Slow motion. The hand is blown out. It's not just not good looking. Yeah, I mean the Samsung slow-mo here looks way better. Close focus, we already covered this. It's not even close. It goes to the to the ultra model. And then autofocus, where I, I expected the iPhone to kill, the Samsung is tight now. I think most people are gonna appreciate just fast, find the focus fast. So I give that to Samsung as well in that exact circumstance. And then Samsung gets the bonus because it has the extra cameras, a 10X. I mean, that's ridiculous. That is a really usable 10X. That's optical 10X. 100X is obviously the software coming into play here. 
you have it if you want to, I don't know, be a weirdo, but, and then, and then it can shoot in 8K. Whoa! It can shoot in 8K 24 frames, and that is cinematic. The snow is still blue, but yeah, Samsung wins. I think the iPhone won the photo compartment. Just as an overall package for what I do and how I use my camera, I'm gonna go with the S21 Ultra. They are both fantastic though. Like to just be shooting this caliber of content off of a smartphone. But yeah, I mean, tough choice. You saw I even had the two devices wrong. It is a tough match, it's a tough battle. It's a split decision. So there you have it, camera showdown complete, S21 Ultra versus iPhone 12 Pro Max. I thought this was kind of a fun way to do it. Really test yourself what you see and what you're looking for. And even to just figure out what you like in an image or inside of video. So hopefully you had fun taking part and guessing yourself. Remember, I do have an S21 Ultra giveaway coming up very soon. So make sure to subscribe for that. We're gonna do it live like I did for that iPhone giveaway previously. I have one silver S21 Ultra and two phantom black S21 Ultras. And I also need to remind you of the later case launch for the new devices, as well as some of your favorites, like the new blue for the variety of iPhone 12s. So go check out later case, link will be down in the description and pick up what is, I mean, I think, one of the best accessories you can throw on your smartphone. So go click the link in the description and check that out too. Stay tuned for the giveaway.